Hey guys, this is Bud Lizer. I'm here with my website, BudLizer.com. Going to be running you through a couple of little programs today, just a quick tutorial. Um, here I at Noisebridge, just got done playing with the Oculus Rift, thanks to Justin who brought it in. And we're going to be talking today a little bit about this turn-based toolkit that I've been working in, in Unity. It's to help you make games like uh, Final Fantasy Tactics and uh, uh, Heroes of Might and Magic. And it uses a hex system, no squares yet, um, made by a game named Song Ten. He's out of the UK, and he, yeah. there's still quite a few bugs, there's a lot of limitations, but it's a really good framework, and um, you can start making stuff really quick, really simple, really fast in there, and then either wait for him to kind of catch up with updates and features, or possibly hire your own developer, Song Ten, to make the features that you really want. So, here's with the unit editor looks like inside of unity here i've got one of my knights selected and you can see these are all the variables that a designer gets to play around with without actually touching any of the code so as a designer i can set all of these cool things up without even touching c sharp or javascript so it makes it a lot faster to to actually get around and start playing with stuff and balancing the game and and really seeing how units react and if the game is fun without spending an eternity trying to make the framework for your game or trying to modify the framework as you go. So, let's jump into Excel. We're going to talk about a geometric progression system. Um, remember, I've got this knight here, and I want to make a dark knight. I want to make something that's going to have higher hit points and higher damage. Um, just because it's kind of cool and something to start with. So, we're going to make sure that we get to this 50 points, and then it has more hit points than 73. Okay. So, first let's take Excel, let's create a couple of digits here. We're going to populate it by fives till we get to 50, and let's just go past it a little bit to 100. No reason not to. Alright, and I say my first hit points are five, and we're going to try multiplying this by 1.5 and see what happens. Probably not going to be the right number that we really want, but it's going to give us some place to start. So we're going to come in here, type equal round up because I don't care about decimals, and I don't want them showing up in my numbers. And we're going to type sum, because we're going to be multiplying a couple fields together. We're going to choose the previous field, and unless I push F4, it's always going to reference the previous field. So we're going to leave that the same. We're going to type our little star here for multiplication, and now up here it's going to do this. Now here I have to push F4 so that I lock in this row. I want row 2 to stay the same, so when I start working on hit points and attack damage and all this other stuff that we get to play around with, it's always going to reference the second row and not something that's populating out through the script. I'm going to close my brackets here, comma 0, and another closing bracket. So that quickly rounded up to 10, and if this works correctly, we should be able to just drag it down and populate it up. And whoa! That got super high, super fast. Yep. So here we have our 50 point night that we're comparing it to. Our HP was supposed to be above 73 and we ended up with 1460 so we really need to tone that number down. But instead of going back and changing all of these individual numbers we can just change our common number. Alright, again coming back to 50, we see that 1.15 brings us to 25, still nowhere near where we want to be. So let's pop this up a little bit, and we're getting really close. And I think that's a good situation right there. So, just basing it off of this 50 hit point guy, we've created the stats for 84 hit points, and that gives us a pretty good starting place for our Dark Knight. And I've done this a little bit using arithmetic progression in another sheet, and just for the damage. So we're going to copy this over just so that we can see what happens to the rest of our stats on this geometric progression. Give me a second. No. Okay, now we're going to look at the minimum damage. We shortcut that with the little up arrow, and the maximum damage, which is a down arrow. I didn't invent those, those are actually how you do it. And of course I want to look at average damage, that's really important for me. It's so important that I forgot to copy it.
There we go. So again, we're going to start off by just seeing what happens. We're going to put some values up here. And now we're going to try and copy this code. And if it was done correctly, it'll copy sideways. Drag it out. And there we go. So you can see that my 5 ended up as a 6. My 10 ended up as an 11, so it looks like it worked perfectly. So we're going to bring those down. And again, remember that this is our baseline. We want a dark knight that's a little bit better than this knight. So we can see that our minimum damage ramped up really high to 17, and our maximum damage ramped up to 30. So that's kind of interesting. So if we drop this down a bit, there we go. We get really close to it, and I haven't changed the progression system any higher than 1.1 up here. Or I could take this back to 5 and drop this down to 1.05, 1 1.03. 1 I didn't see any change off of that. 1.02. Our uh, roundup feature is really kicking us right now. Uh, that's funny. That's interesting. Because of our roundup feature, we're, we're getting really high numbers off of stuff. But that's cool. So this gives us the 14. So let's drop this number down. And look at that. So now we've got some pretty good baselines at a 50 character night. And again, it's not really fair to compare these two, especially at all the other numbers, because you're comparing an arithmetic progression system and a geometric progression system. But just so you know, geometric is when we take our, all of our numbers and we multiply it by a, 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 a value up here at the top. An arithmetic value would be if we added to each of these numbers a number at the top. Okay. Now we're going to find out the sum of our, or our average damage of these by adding those fields together and dividing by 2. And if we just drop that down it should work perfectly. So we can see we've made a knight with 50 hit points, I'm sorry, cost 50, 84 hit points, minimum damage 12, maximum damage 30, which gives us an average damage of 21. So it's just a little bit better than this regular knight. And you can do that for all of the stats here. You will have to be kind of careful how you do it with the AP because it really shouldn't ever go above 5. So you would obviously use the sum value or the round down value and never use the round up value. All right. So now let's jump into Unity proper and let's implement this Dark Knight. So under TBTK, I'm sorry, no, under Game Object, we're going to create Empty. We're going to search for Unit TB. By the way, you have to have TBTK imported already. Attach that to the Game Object. So now it has all these scripts attached to it. That's all part of the unit TB script. Then we're going to create an empty, I'm sorry, create other cylinder. We're going to change the size 1.75, 0 0.01, because I want it to be completely flat, 1.75. And by the way, if you just make the Y0, it's flat, but it won't accept any light and your textures look out, come out really weird. So you do have to give it this minuscule 0.1 on it. Over here, we're gonna drag the cylinder below our game object. And by the way, I'm gonna rename this Dark Knight. You don't have to, but we're going to, or I'm going to. Okay. And I should have a texture for my Dark Knight already. There it is. So now that I've selected the cylinder over here, okay, this is going to be our mesh. The game object is just the script. Make sure that is zeroed out. Turn off the collider. Then take your Dark Knight and drag it below the component bar. For some reason, it doesn't let me drag it to this texture thing. Uh, I don't know why, but that's the way it works. And there you go. Now we can look at this in-game, zoom in on it, and one of the really weird thing is whenever I attach this texture to a flat cylinder, it's upside down. So come up here to transform, 
R for rotation and change that to 180. There we go. Now, TBTK will not recognize this as a unit. And I'll just go ahead and show you this. Unit manager. I cannot drag this in here until I turn it into a prefab. Unity uses prefabs, which takes all of the things you've created over here. Once you've dragged it down into the project folder, it's going to save it to your hard disk, and it's going to save it as a prefab. You'll know it's a prefab when it turns blue over here in the hierarchy window. Now that's in the hierarchy window, all the dark nights that I create and copy, they're going to be based off of this. So even if I tried to come in here and change one of these, it's going to do some funky things because it's always going to relay back to this. So you should always change the prefab. Okay. But needless to say, we can delete that from our hierarchy window now. Click our dark knight, drag that to our unit manager, and it already pops in down there. We do have to assign the texture, and then we can actually use the same texture that we applied for the cylinder. Okay. Now, from the unit manager or from the toolbar, you can open the unit editor change the unit to the Dark Knight, and now we can start adding in his stats. <laughs> so remember, these are the stats that we wanted to use. So I'm going to drag Unity away so I can just see my unit editor. Nice part about having two screens, you should get some. Remember, the cost is going to be 50. My hit points are going to be 84. My AP not on the not in Excel yet but I just know it it's gonna be two we're gonna use a move attack system with our game setup rules HP regen is gonna be set to zero AP regen is gonna be set to two uh, I want my knights to go a little slower in my game so we're gonna turn priority to four I want them to move kind of shorter distances because he's got armor movement range two and sight is what affects our fog of war we're gonna leave that fine at five He's only going to do melee damage. And we want his damage 12 and 30. 12, 30. Counter damage modifier. This is a percentile. So 0 0.0121 1 is what you can set this to. 1 equals 100%. 0 0.01 equals 1%. And this is when he counter attacks how much less damage than he's going to do, or even how much more damage, because we can put in a 2, he'll do then his regular damage. So, let's go ahead and change this to 0 0.9. His hit chance, so his chance of missing, really. 0 0.9 means he'll miss 10% of the time. The critical chance, 10% is a little high for my game, so we're going to set that to 0 0.5. Attacks per turn, we're actually going to set this to 2. Now, because he only has 2 AP, and my game control setup, which you can change under the TPTK in Hierarchy, you can come over here to Game Control. Let's get that out of the way. And there's all these universal settings that you can set that override or parlay off of the unit settings, including your turn mode, your move order, and your attack AP rule and move AP rule. See, we've set this to per move and we use the attack AP rule to per attack. So if I only give him two AP, and even though I gave him two attacks, he has to stand still to use both of his attacks. Kind of reminiscent of a D&D type system. We're gonna set counter attacks to zero, and the reason we're gonna do this is I like having my counter attacks use up AP or use up a special ability, which I can do on cooldown. And once I find it here, Oh, is it not in here? Oh, there it is. Counter. Gain extra counter attack for the next two rounds. So we're going to add that unit ability. We've got our dodge chance. That's his chance of attacks missing him. Armor type. You can set that up later. We'll do a different tutorial for that. And his destroy effect. So this is what's gonna happen when he dies. 
We're just going to use some of the stuff that's already in the system for TVTK. Um, uh, let's yeah. just give them a nice big explosion, shall we? The nice thing about those two is that you have, um, and I've downloaded a bunch of audio game. clips right. from some websites right. that you can find in my game assets section. Fine. And so we'll come over here to yeah. die, strangulation, yeah. gurgle blood. Oop, that's not a move action. So use that. Use that so we give him some cool sound effects. And this is when he melee attacks. So I got a nice sounding axe swing in there. And that should be good. Okay. Now, to put him in the game, we're going to go on the hex grid manager. I hope you can see my mouse pointer because I'm like moving it around so you can see where I'm going. But I don't actually know if you can see that. Come over here to enable grid painter. Click on the unit tab and we can see our dark knight there. And by default, the player faction is zero. So if we want to control this Dark Knight, whoops, wrong. We can add him to the scene by changing unit faction to zero, make sure grid painter is enabled, and just click on a square or hex to put him inside. And because we want to make sure we kill one to see that death effect, let's go ahead and add one to the enemy side or enemy faction as well. And actually, we can add multiple enemy factions and they can even attack each other. So let's put him at faction 2. If you look in my scene manager, the Nen Bear and Firebugs are faction 1. So, um, get ready for some gameplay. Let's turn down the music volume so you can hear me. There we go. So the game works off of Unity in just a simple point-and-click mouse feature. Um, right now my Holy Knight is activated, and I can attack Firebug next to me. It pops, it dies, it makes some sound. Now we got my Dark Knight. So we can make sure we move our Dark Knight, and then should only be able to attack once. And there's no additional range units, but if I could attack again, it would wait for me to end turn. Yes, yeah, no, it, it is very oh, looks like we've encountered a slight bug here. TBTK is not perfect, so even though it's the AI's turn, it is not taking an action. Let's see if end turn does anything. And for some reason, yes, it does. I also noticed that we lost our overlays. There they go. Yeah, no, it, it runs quicker. I'll give you that. Yeah. I'll give you that. Very cool. But it is, uh, All right, let's see if we can get this effect for the Dark Knight. I want to see what the effect is. That nice explosion effect we put on him when he dies. You know what? I also noticed another bug. Our ability for the Dark Knight counterattack is not showing up. So we'll have to see what's going on with that. Boom! And that's it. Just a quick little 19 minute tutorial on geometric progressions using Excel and using TBTK in Unity. Have a great day. Remember, it's budlizer.com. Check us out.